So alright, in today's video I'm going to show you how to build your own OGX Mini. For those of you that never heard of the OGX Mini project, this is essentially a project built around using modern remotes with the original Xbox. However, you can use this on the Xbox 360, PS3, and the Switch dock as well. In fact, it can even be used on the computer. We'll get more to the pros of this project later on, but for the time being, what do we need to get started? Well, first of all, I recommend getting a Pico W or a Pico W2. These have the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, so you won't need to solder anything. You just plug them in your computer, drag a .uf2 file onto it as if it's a flash drive, and they're ready to use. The particular build I'm doing today is the ESP32 Plus Pico, meaning I will have to solder some stuff up later, but it's not that difficult as you can see here. So to get started, I'm going to head on over to the releases section on the GitHub page and scroll down to download the appropriate firmware. In my particular case, it's the Pico ESP32.zip here. I'm just going to click on the link and download that. Once we have it downloaded, you should get a file that looks something like this. Just extract it and you will have two folders. They will be called ESP32 and RP2040. As you can see, I already got those extracted. And since the Pico is the easiest to set up and program, let's start off with that. First of all, you need to open up the RP2040 folder, and once you have the folder open, you can then plug your Raspberry Pi Pico into your computer. Be sure to hold the boot select button while you're plugging the Raspberry Pi Pico into the computer, or it will not work. If done successfully, it should pop up on your computer like a flash drive. As you can see, it just popped up for me. I don't think the cable I'm using is the best, so let's hurry and get this done quick. Just open it up. It will look just like a normal flash drive and act like a normal flash drive. All you need to do is then drag the .uf2 file onto here, and it will manually self-eject itself. If everything worked appropriately, you should see this window close on its own. As you can see, it did. That is it for the Raspberry Pi Pico. We got it programmed and set up. So what we can do now is unplug it from our computer. And if you want to verify if everything is working, I believe you can plug the Pico back in and it should just show up under game controllers, whether you're on Windows or Linux. And as you can see, it does for me. So that means the Pico is set up and ready to use. The next thing we need to do is set up and flash our ESP32. So I'm going to do this on Linux, however, flashing and setting up an ESP32 on Windows is fairly simple. If you want to know the steps to do that, check out my previous video on the Conwell Tour Blue Retro OGX360 build. I'll link it down below in the description. For the time being, since it's quicker and easier for me to flash this under Linux, I'm going to be flashing my ESP32 while using Linux. So to get started, I'm going to right click inside my ESP32 folder and open a terminal. From here, I am then going to plug my ESP32 into my computer. Now this command here I'll have listed down below in the description as well, so if you just want to copy and paste commands, you can easily do that. What you need to do is run this command, and that will then search your computer for that specific device. We need to find our device ID in order to, well, flash it. And as you can see, my CH31UART converter, that is my ESP32. So what I'm going to do is copy this here, or make a mental note of it, and we will be using that again later. So now that we got that, I'm going to clear out my terminal. And I'm actually going to erase my ESP32 first. You don't have to do this, because when you program it, it should automatically erase. But just in case it doesn't automatically erase, I'm going to just uh, run the command here and erase it properly. You have to have sudo before the command first. And you want to also make sure the TTY is set appropriately, you know that number we took a note of earlier. Be sure to change it here to suit whatever number your ESP32 shows up on. Once you got that sorted, hit enter, and the ESP32 should then erase. If not, you do not have ESP tool installed. I almost forgot you need to have ESP tool installed on your computer in order to erase or program the ESP32 to install this package. It's sudo app-get install ESP tool under Debian-based distros, or on Arch-based distributions, it's sudo pacman-s ESP tool. So be sure you have that installed or else this won't work at all. 
Anyway, now that we got our ESP32 erased, we need to run the next command. The next command is fairly long and complex, but it's not too hard to understand once you look at it. We are going to be flashing these three folders, or these three files I should say, here, and we need to do them at very specific hexadecimal addresses. If you want to know for sure whether these change or not, go on over to the release section of the uh, GitHub repository. And in here, I believe it should show you what hexadecimal everything needs to be at in order to flash it, as you can see here. For the time being, I'm going to have this command in the description. So if you just want to copy and paste it and hit enter, you should be good to go. But you need to make sure your port is set to the correct port number. You know that number we made a mental note of earlier? Be sure to put your TTY to whatever the TTY was for the ESP32 on your computer. After you did that, hit enter, and it should then flash our ESP32. Now it does take some time, but it ain't too long overall. It should be done here soon. And as you can see, it is now done. Our ESP32 is set up. If you want to verify that your ESP32 is working, you can just try to pair a remote. You might have to unplug and plug the ESP32 back in. I'm not 100% sure. Just grab any remote and hold the Bluetooth pairing button and your remote should pair up to the ESP32. In my particular case, I think there's a bug with the current OGX Mini build. I can only pair Xbox One remotes. I'm hoping that gets fixed soon. So if no remote seems to pair for you right now, try like an Xbox One remote and see what happens. But yeah, in theory, that is everything done. We have both boards flashed and we can now unplug our ESP32. From here, we can solder everything together as per the diagram. Now the original diagram is made in such a way that you have to plug both boards in. I will be updating this diagram to show you how to power both boards through just the Pico itself. So you only have one cable needed instead of two, for instance. I believe they did it this way so that eventually you could program the uh, ESP32 through the Pico. But I'm never going to do it like that, so I'm just going to power both boards up using the Pico. So if you want to do my diagram, just take it with a grain of salt. That might change in the future. Anyway, once you're all done, to verify that everything is working after you soldered it all together, you can plug the Pico through either the USB-C or the USB micro, whatever board you got, into your computer, and it should pop up under game controllers. Don't worry if none of your button presses are working when you're trying this, it will automatically be set up to work in direct input mode first. What this means is we need to hold a button combination to put it into X input mode. So on the little GitHub page here, if you scroll down, it will have a section showing you how to change platforms. You can change it through the web app, or you can hit a button combo. In my particular case, all you need to do is then hit and hold start plus up. You hold that for three seconds and it should change modes and it should just now work on your computer. As you can see here, the board is testing and it is working properly. My bad, I had it in the wrong mode actually there. If you have it in the proper mode, it will actually say Xbox 360. Be sure to hold the button combo long enough. I just missed that entirely by chance. I'm glad I caught it before I finished the video up here. But as you saw, to change in input mode, all you have to do is hold the button combo appropriately. If I want to go back to the original Xbox input, all I gotta do is hold start plus D-pad right for 3 seconds and it should change. As you see, it just changed just like that and it is now working in direct input mode. I'm gonna go back to X input mode by holding start and D-pad up. But yeah, once you set a mode, it will remember that mode. Don't worry. If you unplug it and have to plug it back in, it will not forget the mode that you're on. But yeah, that is it. If you happen to build the particular version of this project that I did that requires a Pico and an ESP32, down below in the description, I will include a mock-up of a 360 shell that you can put everything in if you want it. All you need to do is print out the parts appropriately, and snap everything together, and it should hold fairly well. I'm gonna eventually put a green LED in mine and paint it white and to make it match my console a bit more, but overall for a first attempt at a Xbox 360 enclosure for this thing, it came out pretty good in my opinion. 
Although if I were to redo this project in the future, I would most definitely use the Pico W or Pico W tube because it seems like that board as of right now gets more support. I really don't recommend building this dual board solution unless they add chaining to the mix like the Conwell Tour build. If you need a device for your original Xbox, please check out the Conwell Tour Blue Retro OG X360 build. That by far is much better and works much more better for me anyway on my original Xbox. But yeah, if you just want one player set up for your original Xbox, this is perfect. If you want to use this on your 360, this is a perfect solution as well. Just know they are working to adding the controller encryption method to this build. That way you could just plug this in any bog standard Xbox 360 and it will just work. As of right now though, you need a plugin installed. I'll have some b-roll on screen. You'll need a modified Xbox 360 in order to use this on the 360 as of right now. In the future, you will not need the patch in order to get this to work. It will just work. When it comes to your PS3 and your Switch dock, you shouldn't need any funny shenanigans there. It should just be a plug-and-play solution. Same thing with the PlayStation Classic. I did test it in my PlayStation Classic, and it works great. Although the PlayStation Classic cannot power both boards simultaneously at once, you will want to build a... Uh, Pico W or Pico W2 for the PlayStation Classic instead. But yeah, I think that was long enough to let some B-roll play out on screen. I think I'm going to leave today's video off here. I really hope this guide helped you out. If it did, let me know in the comments down below. But for the time being, I'm going to leave this off here now. DTPK signing off. Peace. You utilize and use pretty much any Bluetooth controller you want, as if it's a Switch Pro controller. Said, how do we go about actually building one of these? What hardware requirements are there? Well, first.